In this video, I want to show you how when we're conducting a bivariate analysis, in other words, one dependent variable and one independent variable, that sometimes our um, tests are actually um, doing much of the same thing. For example, let's say you have an interval dependent variable, such as a composite um, measure of social trust, and you want to see if um, gender, male, female, is associated with different levels of social trust. Um, usually, since you're just doing a bivariate analysis, you can do a t-test. Um, I also want to show you that if you do a simple regression of social trust on gender, that you'll get essentially the exact same results. And the same thing with ANOVA. Let's say you're looking at a interval, an interval-dependent variable such as social trust, and you want to see if it varies by race. Um, one obviously could do a, a one-way ANOVA to see if, in fact, um, racial classification is associated with differential levels of social trust on average. But you can also um, do a simple regression. So I want to show you how those things two compare. So I pulled up, a, actually this is from the Social Capital Community Benchmark Survey, but I took a smaller sample of just 3,000 respondents. Um, I already have a female variable and I also um, messed around with a social trust composite. Um, I called it New Social Trust and I put it all on a positive scale. So we can go ahead and look at my new social trust composite. Basically it goes almost from essentially 0 up to 3.5. And then a higher value meaning more social trust. And then I have a variable called female, so a higher value. I didn't do value labels, but a higher value meaning it's female. And of course we also have a ethnic core variable. Um, I did relabel those, so you can see that we have different classifications, white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, Asian, Latino. So if you're interested in just doing a bivariate analysis, for example, does gender have an effect on levels of social trust on average? One could just do the t-test. So t-test, looking at new social trust, a dependent variable, by female. Okay. And that's the results you get. And what we see here is that there is a very small, in this smaller sample of 2,988 respondents, um, there's a small difference in means of 0 0.05. Right? We take that divided by the standard error of the difference to get a t-statistic, and then we assess the size of that t-statistic and the likelihood of it being the result of sampling error, or a fluke sample, and the likelihood is less than 0 0.05, but, but close. Um, so we can be confident that, in fact, the null hypothesis um, we, that we can reject the null hypothesis that the difference is zero, so we embrace the alternative hypothesis that in fact there is a gender difference, that it's not zero, that it's something other than that. Um, and that's what, what a t-test does. Okay? But I want to show you the similarities between that and if we were to just do a simple regression of new social trust. Remember ORLS regression assumes an interval dependent variable and then our, um, deep, or our independent variable is gender, uh, female. And what we can see here is actually some, some correspondence between the, the results here. You'll notice that the difference in means was, uh, in this case, negative 0.05. It just depends on which gender you had at first. So essentially, in absolute terms, it's 0.05. And what you'll notice is that the coefficient in the regression is the exact same value. That is, we go from male to female, we can expect an increase in average social trust of 0.052. Okay? Um, we also see that we get a, the same p-value. 0 0.0449 became 0 0.045 when we rounded. Um, we get the same exact standard error and the exact same t statistic rounded. Okay. So essentially, when you have this kind of situation, an interval dependent variable and a dichotomous independent variable, um, the t test and the simple regression are going to return the exact same results. Okay. Um, you do get a little bit of difference. I mean, you get an r squared with the simple regression. If we were to do the t test, we could calculate the Cohen's d. That would give us a, a measure of um, size, substantive size of the effect, which is small. Okay. Um, so that's the similarity between t-test and simple regression. Now let's say we wanted to see if there are racial differences um, uh, against social trust. And so we could do the one-way ANOVA, looking at new social trust by ethnic four. And we might also want to do the one for only option and the tab. Okay. So we can see that each of those groups has a certain 
average level of social trust. There's obviously variation, which is a standard deviation. And significant ANOVA, right? F statistic of 178, p value is quite small. So we can um, say that, that there, in fact, the overall differences between the means is, is large relative to the variation within groups. And if we want to do find out where those differences lie, not every group is necessarily different from every other group. So the bone throwing option shows us that there is a difference between blacks and whites, and it's significant, Asian and white, significant, Latino, white, significant, and so on. The only two groups that do not show a significant difference is between Latinos and African Americans. There's a small difference, but it's not statistically significant. Okay, so that's the um, the one way ANOVA that that we're mostly familiar with. Um, but notice what we could do here is just regress new social trust against, and we have to dummy out our ethnic four variable because we're not treating it as an ordinal or an interval. It just we're just trying to look at the classifications. So we do the I dot ethnic four, and what that's going to do is leave out the first category, which in this case is white non-Hispanic and compare all of the subsequent groups to that. So here we can see that um, African Americans relative to whites have a significantly lower level of social trust and significant. Same thing with Asians relative to whites. Same thing with Latinos relative to whites and it's significant. And what we'll notice if we kind of scroll up here that these coefficients again because they're dummied out are going to be the exact same as the difference in means between blacks and whites or Asians and whites, or Latinos and whites, for example. Okay? Um, the only thing we're not going to get with this um, regression is we won't be able to directly say that the difference between blacks and Latinos is not statistically significantly different. We can see that they're different slightly, but um, with regression we don't have a direct way of saying that there is no significant difference between those two groups. Um, one other similarity that we'll see if we rerun the one way, but instead of using the one way command, we just use the ANOVA command and get rid of the bone throwing and tabulate. We do that, and then we can type in the command for effect size and ethnic four. It gives us a, similar to Cohen's D, it gives us two measures of sort of substantive effect size for that ANOVA. And what we'll notice is that we get an omega squared and an eta squared of about 0.1 five, nine or so on. And if we compare that to the R squared, you'll see that it's essentially the same. So R squared in this uh, regression, new social trust against those race ethnic categories, the R squared is very similar, if not the same, as omega squared and eta squared from the ANOVA command. Okay. So um, just a couple of ways in which uh, there's a similarity because of the essentially the functions are the same when you are doing bivariate analysis. Um, this no longer holds once we move from simple regression where there's one uh, independent variable to multiple regression where there's multiple independent variables. That relationship no longer holds. But in terms of bivariate analysis, um, we find those similarities. Yeah.